finally long promised video about uh, Garmin HRM Pro heart rate monitor heart rate strap and really uh, I will not be going deep uh, into every specific feature and every specific use of this device you definitely can go online on YouTube and find videos like that I will be talking my personal experience what I found most useful about this device and how it impacted my performance so uh, things I will talk about will be accuracy in what circumstances and why this device gives better accuracy than your wrist heart monitor um, I will talk about lactate threshold what is that and how it helps to determine your maximum heart rate without really really painful workouts which you usually would have to do and manually calculate uh, maximum heart rate I will also mention uh, running dynamics which basically you can get a separate device uh, Garmin uh, running dynamics pod but this actually also has all those features built in into heart rate monitor I will mention what are those uses which I found useful um, and also mention some other uses which were very interesting and surprising for me because this device really can track steps track your heart rate during the day um, and uh, it can start you can actually exercise without your wristwatch being on your hands so basically it will uh, unload the data on the device and upload once you finish the exercise um, so I will, I will mention that as well in this video so let's dive in and let's go into details originally I didn't do too much research on this device I didn't realize how capable it is I was first looking for accuracy and you have to be aware that if you are doing uh, light runs slow runs long runs your uh, wrist heart rate optical wrist heart rate will be very accurate in those kind of circumstances well but if you're doing some sprint intervals uh, or doing uh, some very fast paced running that's where uh, Garmin HRM or any other heart monitor really shines because when you're running very fast doing your sprint you will be moving your hand very fast and it's even if your device is snug on your wrist it will still be inaccurate in that kind of circumstances while uh, heart rate strap uh, will not shake as much and it's because it's lighter it actually st sticks to your body uh, better so that's where you get a high amount of accuracy compared to uh, wrist heart rate monitor um, I will also link a very good uh, resource I found about accuracy and comparison of uh, heart rate monitors you'll find that uh, link in the description below so have a look if you want to have uh, if you want to read more about this one feature which I really wasn't looking uh, into when I was buying HRM Pro was ability for it to track uh, calories, steps and heart rate during the day. So really I wasn't too much interested in it uh, but I realized when I'm uh, charging my uh, Garmin Phoenix 6X Pro really once a week or sometimes even on rare occasions it charges quite some time and if I'm very serious about my uh, recovery rate um, and my vitals during that period of time um, I sometimes actually put my uh, Garmin HRM Pro on leave my Garmin watch on the charge for uh, five six hours I don't really care as long as I'm able to track uh, that vital formation okay so let's talk about running dynamics and um, I will mention just a few aspects of running dynamics which were interesting to me but also I'll add a link below in the comments so you can actually have a read uh, in more details but basically in short uh, running dynamics really helps to uh, analyze uh, very detailed aspects of your running of your movements and to be able to identify issues or let's say aspects which can slightly improve your pace uh, your performance really it's something that is specifically for those people who are really looking for those incremental improvements and were really uh, intended to focus on those aspects so for instance if you talk about um, ground contact time 
Uh, it's something that allows you to determine if you are not overstriding, meaning not uh, landing your foot too far, further than it should be. So uh, less ground contact you have, uh, better experienced runner you are really, or your running is more effective. So uh, Garmin states that uh, very experienced runners will have uh, ground contact time around 200 milliseconds. And in general, most people will have it around 300 milliseconds or under. So it was interesting to me when I uh, tracked this, uh, looked into this specific uh, aspect that my ground contact time is usually around 250 milliseconds. But if I'm doing sprints, it will be around 220 or sometimes less. So basically I looked into that. I said, okay, it, it, it looks fine. I'm not uh, having some inefficiencies in that area. So let's go on and I'll not care about it too much. And also uh, there will be ground contact time balance, which basically will uh, measure how much contact, contact time you have on right and the left foot. So really it has to be balanced uh, close to 50%, but can deviate a bit like one, two percent to one side or another. It should be normal. But again, I looked into that. I thought to myself, okay, my balance is fine. I should not look into that too much. I sometimes open a running statistics to double check if everything is fine. Uh, I feel good. That's great. Let's go on. So, uh, and really uh, all those aspects uh, also describe, uh, I will, like I said, I will share the link in the description below. All those aspects are really, if you have some inefficiency, if you, if you feel that something is not right, you can actually look in those running dynamics details and determine what is wrong and then research in more details how I can actually optimize that. Uh, and that's how I looked at that. I looked into cadence, stride length, vertical uh, oscillation, vertical ratio, uh, all those aspects were in range and actually uh, you, you would be able to open um, details of your workout and scroll to all those uh, specific uh, running dynamics elements, tap on them and uh, tap on help. So usually every single uh, running dynamics aspects will have a description inside the app which you can actually read through and determine if your running dynamics is, is fine in range or is something that you should focus on. And if you see that it's out of range or if you can see that it's some issue uh, based on that specific dynamic, you can actually research further and analyze how we can actually improve or solve that situation. So that's my actual experience with running dynamics and I was really curious about it. Funny enough, uh, I didn't understand that running dynamics is already integrated in this device. So I looked into purchasing um, Garmin Running Dynamics Pod and just a bit later realized that everything is in this device as well. So that, that was a nice surprise for me. Hopefully it's not, it will not be a surprise for you because you will be doing informed decision buying this device. Okay, let's talk about lactate threshold. So first of all, uh, again, I will link, uh, uh, I'll add link in the description below so you can read more about it. Uh, but basically lactate threshold is a point where muscles starting to rapidly fatigue uh, and why why you should care about that really so in my specific circumstances when i'm doing uh, longer runs uh, obviously i want to make sure that training is effective and i'm not recovering like three or four days after that uh, because this device allows me to identify my threshold uh, lactate threshold i know specific heart rate at, the, at which point my uh, muscles start to rapidly fatigue and I avoid that heart rate during the longer runs. So for instance, if I will be doing my usual uh, base run, uh, I will make sure that if I go in uphill, I don't hit or go above threshold for a longer period of time. Because if I will, I literally am feeling much, uh, I, I need much longer time to recover. I have pain in my muscles and, and uh, I can continue my usual training routine because I have to add an extra day for recovery. So that's how it helps me. And in addition to that, uh, it uses your threshold to identify your max heart rate. So, so usually it's uh, max heart rate is 10% above your threshold, uh, your lactate threshold. It automatically updates your heart 
red zones on your Garmin device so you can be sure that uh, your heart rate zones are updated according to your performance levels. Just in case you wonder what you need to actually identify your lactate threshold, so you would need your heart rate, heart rate monitor. It doesn't work with your um, optical heart rate monitor. Uh, you have to have VO2 max established. So if you did your like 5K run or whatever, it automatically uh, does that for you in advance. Uh, you have to have a GPS lock uh, enabled and you basically, uh, what you need to do, uh, you either wait until your suggested workout is a threshold test and just, just follow that. Or if you want to do it manually, uh, basically you go into your run settings, uh, go into training uh, and you should have lactate threshold test here so basically you just take it uh, you can see my heart rate monitor is not connected it will say uh, if it's connected it will just uh, allow you to start your exercise it will give you a warm-up period around 10 minutes usually or maybe a bit less depending on uh, this custom workout um, and then it basically will push you to the limit at, at some level so basically it, it, it's quite an intense workout but it will push you uh, to identify your lactate threshold in case you already have your hrm pro heart rate monitor connected and you following garmin suggested workouts uh, it does do the threshold test automatically for you so it will suggest you the run if you accept that particular run it will get a required amount of data, will sometimes uh, intentionally allow you to go above your threshold to make sure that threshold is uh, identified correctly uh, and will update the threshold after each uh, threshold test, after each time it has enough information to determine the threshold. So in my experience, um, I would see the threshold actually increasing so i am able to reach higher pace and higher rate uh, heart rate without hitting my threshold um, and you can see on the screen uh, there is a, some past few weeks statistics where my threshold is actually uh, increasing so that's quite a cool statistics to have and uh, i'm planning some marathon runs half half marathon runs uh, in a couple of months so uh, i will be aware at what space and what heart rate I should be able to run for extended period of time without uh, basically recovering for a week or so. Uh, when I'm doing my usual base runs uh, and I really want to make sure that I do a lower aerobic exercises, so I target for zone two um, and, uh, and I monitor on my, on my watch uh, also using audible cues via earphones but i don't go above the particular zone which i care about or threshold so it makes my like easy workout exercises not becoming a heavy exercise if i hit the uh, uphill or um, some intense wind so basically i'm actually reacting to my heart rate increasing and i slow down if i can going against a strong wind or uh, steep hills which I face during my run um, and that's really about it about uh, my experience with uh, Garmin HRM Pro I, I don't skip putting it on uh, every time I go for a run I don't usually care about it for like walks or different types of exercises which could be actually interesting uh, but uh, what I also do usually I put my HRM Pro next to my earphones, uh, next to my phone in the morning, so I don't actually forget it, because in the first few days I would forget about uh, putting it on, but once I actually got into that routine of putting it next to those things I usually take, uh, take, on, take in the morning before I run, it became automatic. So that's also my advice to you, just put it there where you don't forget it at first and then it will be just, just your habit. Um, I hope you find this video useful. Uh, give me a thumbs up, thumbs up if you if you like it, and obviously subscribe if you're interested in this such in such a content. Uh, because getting more subscribers and getting more likes really makes it clear that uh, they're interested.
people are interested in getting more more materials like this and i'll keep working on it so thank you very much and have a good run